All right, so welcome back everybody. So for this video, I'm gonna show you guys how to play Summer Camp. So let's get started teaching you guys how to play this game. Now, Summer Camp is a deck building game. It's a very easy deck building game, but it's a very fun deck building game as well. So let's talk about first uh, the how you are going to actually score points in this game. Now, there are two ways you're gonna score points in this game. One of the ways you're gonna score points is if you purchase certain cards, like Bird Watching here has this star on it, meaning it's worth one point at the end of the game, one experience point, okay? In this game, experience is basically victory points in this game. So you'll get one experience for that. This one is a very expensive card, the most expensive you can purchase, but it only is going to give you two experience points, meaning that out of all of these cards here, you're not going to get very many experience points from them. So the main way to get experience points is actually going to be moving up these little campers here, okay? Moving them up on each of the different tracks. Okay, there's three tracks here, and you'll get merit badges as you go up. Once you have all of your campers of your color up to this bridge or past this bridge on each of the three tracks, you're going to get yourself a participation badge, okay? And the highest amount of points that you'll get is the always the one on top. So whoever manages to get all three of their campers to this side or on this bridge here is going to get the most victory points for participation. And then once you get all of your campers onto these bridges or past these bridges, then you'll also acquire the Camp All-Star Merit Badge as well, which will also give you a lot of points too. And obviously it will obviously give you more points if you are able to obtain it first versus the other opponents. Then there are other three other merit badges you will acquire as well. Once you get a camper to a bridge, so if you get a camper to this bridge, or to this bridge, or to this bridge, once they get there, they will allow you to acquire the corresponding merit badge for that track. And in this game, we have so many different, basically, tracks, but each track will have a basically a different activity that it's based off of. So this one is outdoors, this one is cooking, and the top one is water sports for this demonstration. But there are other uh, decks you can play with as well. So for instance, you can play with any of these. You'll only play with three out of the seven, so you can choose which of the seven you want to play with, but we've also got friendship, adventure, games, and arts and crafts as well. So each of these you could potentially play with as well, mixing and matching for some, obviously, replayability. And each of the cards in these decks kind of offer a unique experience to the game. So they each have something unique that makes them different, that adds, obviously, variety to your game. So, but yeah, so that's the point. Trying to get these guys, these campers, onto these badges. Uh, onto these bridges and then once you do you'll get a merit badge for the corresponding activity so if you get your camper up to here you'll acquire outdoors if you get your camper here you will get the cooking merit badge and if you get your camper here you'll get the water sports merit badge and that is basically all of the points that you're going to get in the game that is it pretty much so that's the object of the game is to do that now how do you do that though? Well, this is a deck building game. And so in your deck building, in your deck, you'll, have, you'll start with 10 cards in your deck, okay? Each deck will consist of seven of these lights out cards, which as you see have no action, but that doesn't mean they're completely useless either. And then you'll get one card for each of the different decks, uh, types of starting decks you're playing with. So you'll get nature walk for outdoors, you'll get kitchen chores for cooking, and you will get water safety for water sports. Each one of them will have a move one on it. And so if you're playing with other decks, they will have the same thing. They'll have move one on them, 
but there'll be a different name and obviously a different type of activity as well. And so that's how you're going to start initially start moving on this tract. You're going to move one of your campers depending on which card you play. So if you play this card called Nature Walk, then you would move your camper up one on the Nature Walk spot, for instance. Now, obviously, it would be very slow going if that's all you had for the entire game, which is why this is a deck building game. And so you'll play cards and you will buy cards that will let you do a variety of things. So what can you buy? Well, obviously, there's several different cards you could potentially buy over here or over here. But on this side, you'll only have access to two cards at a time and it will be random, so you won't always have the same starting cards. These cards over here are in every single game. They are part of the base set. The first one is pretty cheap. It only costs two energy to purchase, and it gives you two energy. Now you're probably asking me, what is energy? Well, energy is basically what you need to purchase the cards. You need to have energy to do so. And so, let's say I was, if I had five cards in my hand, okay, Let's say I had five cards in my hand, and these were the five cards I had. I could perform one of two things. I could use the card for its action. So I could use water safety to move one up, my camper up, on this track up here. Or I could use it to instead gain one energy. If I do that, though, I can't use it for its action effect by moving up one. Lights Out has no action effect but you can still use it to get one energy. And so therefore, if I had five cards in my hand and I decided to use all five, that would get me five energy, which would then allow me to buy some cards. Obviously, only some cards. Like, for instance, I could buy the s'mores that costs two money. I could also purchase the scavenger hunt as well and the s'mores because they would equal five energy, which is what I have, right? And obviously, this one would give me more energy when I play it as an action. So you'd get lots of energy, obviously, with s'mores. Scavenger Hunt is going to allow you to discard cards to draw the same amount of cards that you discard up to three, okay? And that will be definitely useful, but you don't want to get too many of these. You want to try to get these the most, okay? And then the one up here, Free Time, is worth four energy, but it'll allow you to move up one space on any one of these tracks or paths, okay? So that's the three different cards you can purchase from this side here that are always available unless you run out. And if all the cards run out over here, then, well, you can't obviously buy any more. But then these cards over here are all a little bit more variable and different. So we have uh, bird watching out for the great outdoors. And this one would let you draw three cards and then discard three cards. But you'll notice it's going to cost you five energy to get. So if you were to wanting this card the most, you would have to most likely use all of your cards to get that, this card here, basically. But yes, you could purchase this if you had five energy as well. Okay, um, let's see. Let's just show you some of the other cards we have out here. So, camping trip, if you purchase this one, and it costs eight energy, so that's gonna take a while to get. You're definitely going to need some cards that give you lots of energy, like some s'mores or some snack bars, and we'll get to the snack bars momentarily. But this one would allow you to move up three spaces on this path here, which is obviously a lot better than one space every time you play a card, right? So obviously, you're gonna want something like this as well, um, and there's cards in here that allow you to move up two spaces on their particular path as well. There just doesn't happen to be any out at the moment. Pizza making is basically the same thing as the camping trip, except it will move, let you move up three spaces here when it's played. Sailing is basically the same thing as pizza making and camping trip, but it will allow you to move up three spaces on this path. And then we've got hot cocoa. Hot Cocoa, which would cost four energy to purchase, is going to give you three snack bars. So you'd get three snack bars. Now there is a limit to how many snack bars you can have. You can only have six max, okay? You can only have six max, and once you have six, you can't get any more. So you can't hoard too many of them. But what are snack bars good for? Well, snack bars are temporary energy, because they do technically give you energy in real life anyways, somewhat. So. 
you can use snack bars to obviously purchase cards. So if you don't have enough cards to purchase a certain card because you don't have enough energy, but you have some snack bars lying around, you could use you know, some of these snack bars to obviously add to that equation and purchase the cards you want. So that is something that is worth doing for sure, but you might also want to hold on to a couple so that way you can get those really expensive cards, the ones that cost like eight energy, for instance. So that's what snack bars do. And then we have one more card that happens to be out called fishing, which will allow you to move up one space on any path. And then if you land on a bridge, so if you land on a bridge when you use this card, so if this card moves a camper up one and it lands on a bridge in the process, it will allow you to draw one card as well. So that's a, that's a deal. What a deal is that? That's awesome. That's what you get for fishing. Sometimes it really does pay up. Okay, so then there are other things on these paths to also mention as well. So let's uh, just grab one of these tiles here since they're not all together. You'll notice we have two things on these paths. Well, this one is obviously a snack bar, right? So when your camper goes here, you automatically get one snack bar from landing there. Cool, right? This one will allow you to move up one space. So if you move a camper from here to here, then you can move up one space on any of the paths that you want to. And if that one space allows you to land on another one of these, that means you get the bonus as well, or this for that matter, or any of the bonuses, you still get them. So you could have a chain reaction of bonuses depending on how you move your campers up, obviously. And since these, this game is set up at random, this whole, these, all these uh, tiles here will also be random for each game, so they won't always be in the same spot. Then this one, you'll notice, has only one type of bonus. When you get this bonus, you'll get to draw one card, hence the little plus symbol on the card-looking thing, which will indicate that you get to draw a card when you land there. Pretty cool, I think. And that's the three different bonuses that you'll get for obviously drawing cards. Now, obviously, let's talk about the deck building aspect of the game, because that's the only thing left to really talk about, especially if you've never played a deck building game before. So in this game, there is one slight difference from most deck building games. For the first turn, so everyone's first turn is a little different. The first turn, you're only allowed to draw three cards if you're the starting player. You only get three cards. So you're at a disadvantage for going first because you only get to draw three cards. The second player, however, would get to draw four cards for their turn. A little bit better, right? If you're playing with three players, the third player can draw five cards for their turn. And if you're playing with four players, the fourth player will get to draw six cards for their first turn. Then, after that's all said and done, then just like normal, you will draw five cards for your hand. Just like in any, just like in most other deck building games, you will draw five cards for your hand. Dominion is the same way. You draw five cards for your hand. It's just that first turn, everyone's first turn will be a little bit different. And then everything else will normalize after that. So, like I said, you'll draw five cards. Let's just say the first round is already taken care of and everyone's taken their first turn. So the first thing you would do is obviously draw your five cards for your turn. And then you could, like I said, you could, you could use these cards to, for energy or you could use it for the action. So let's say I decided to play this water safety for its action. I'd get to move my camper up one here because that's for that path. And then I could use these lights out cards for four energy. So one, two, three, and four energy. And then I could use this snack bar and use it now for five energy. And then I could purchase something costing five, like, oh, I don't know, how about bird watching? Then that bot card that I just bought would go to my discard pile, along with every other card that I played or didn't play. All of the cards will go to the discard pile, and then you'll draw your next five cards for your next hand, for instance, just like in most deck building games, and obviously replenish cards that obviously were bought. So this one was bought, so now we've got another one out for this. And then obviously it would be the next person's turn to go, and then it would be your turn after that. You'd get to take your action. Ooh, I get to move up one on this space. I could move up one on this space, on this path. 
And then I'd have three energy. I could maybe purchase myself a scavenger hunt or a s'mores, for instance, something like that. You know, or maybe if I wanted the, the uh, plant identification because it only costs four, I could decide which one of these two cards here to use for the energy instead and then just move up one for the other card, for instance, for the other path, as a for instance. Then once all of the cards have been used and have been discarded, when you need to draw five cards and you are no longer able to draw five cards from your deck, then you will shuffle your discard pile and you will obviously turn this into your brand new deck just like in other deck building games and that is basically how you play summer camp that is basically everything you need to know in order to play the game so i hope you guys liked this video if you guys liked my explanation don't forget to leave me a like on this video and i'll see you guys again next time goodbye